All right, candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. His support has more than doubled over the past couple of months with Republican voters, earning him a center stage-ish. No one is smack in the center here uh, tomorrow night, but he will be close to the center tomorrow night. The Florida governor's allies say that he needs to, quote, hammer this rising newcomer. We asked him about that yesterday. He said that wasn't a memo that he had paid any attention to. Uh, but the New York Times asked Republicans for the first thing that comes to mind when they hear Mr. Ramaswamy's name. And here's what they said, quote, interesting, young, is, hmm, a word, confidence, and underdog. So what will voters take away uh, from seeing him on stage tomorrow night? They'll have their own words to describe it. No doubt Vivek Ramaswamy joins me now. Uh, good to have you with us, Vivek. It's good nice to see, to see you, Martha. in person here it's in good. Milwaukee. What, what's your prep like? You know, I've been trying to spend a lot of time with the family. I have been on the road so much that we've been getting some workouts in, playing oh, some tennis. Oh, we see that. We, we have a little video of that. Oh, you do? Like, okay. <laughs> well, why do you play tennis without your shirt on? Because it we'll was scorching. We'll start with the heavy substantive questions. Well, this is, this is heavy hitting. You know? yeah. So uh, it's scorching in central Ohio mm -hmm. where we spend some time, and that's how I grew up playing as well. Yeah. My wife and I had a good workout this morning, spent some time with the kids, just got into Milwaukee, and so... It's actually been good to take a couple of days. Yeah. I've been in nine states over the last seven, wow. eight days. And so having a couple of days with the family was good to take decompress. Yeah. All right. You know, I do want to ask you about something that's obviously gotten a lot of attention over the past couple of days with regard to your comments about September 11th. And let's just play your quote from the interview. This is with The Atlantic. And here it is. I think it is legitimate to say how many... Police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers? Like, I think we wanted, maybe the answer is zero, probably a zero, for all I know, right? I have no reason to think it was anything other than zero. But if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission, absolutely that should be an answer the public knows the answer to. Well, if we're doing a January 6th commission, absolutely those should be questions that we should get to the bottom of. Do you think there were federal agents on planes on, on September 11th of course who not. were part of the attack on the Twin Towers? Per the clip that you just played, of course not was my point. However, I have a very different view of January 6th. We know for sure there were federal agents were in the field. Were you conflating the two things when you were talking about them? No, I think the reporter asked about him in a combined manner. He said, why should we ask that question if you're not asking it of 9-11? I said, you know what? I always favor getting to the truth of what the government tells us. The deeper point, Martha, though, is this. We have a government that has systematically lied to the people of this country. I'm a millennial. I'm 38. I grew up into an era, whether it was the Clinton administration, whether it was the Bush administration or the Obama administration, that has systematically lied, gotten us into foreign wars in Iraq and elsewhere on false pretenses. Even now, we have a government that lies about the origin of COVID-19, about the veracity of that Hunter Biden laptop, about government technology censorship, increasingly about even how our money is being spent in Ukraine. And one of the things that I'm going to do as the next president of the United States is restore truth in government. OK, but the let view me... is they can't people can't handle the truth. I, I think the people can handle the truth. OK, I, you know, that, it, it is a confusing statement uh, that you made. So just to be crystal clear here. Who was responsible for the killing of nearly 3,000 Americans on September 11th? Terrorists from al-Qaeda. But this is a crucial truth that's been left out, aided by the Saudi government. And this is a stain on our national history. The fact that the FBI and the 9-11 Commission lied back in 2001 and 2002, saying there was no Saudi intelligence involvement. We now know in declassified documents quietly from the government in 2021 that Omar al-Bayoumi, supposed graduate student, was indeed a Saudi intelligence operative. And I think we can't just sweep these facts under the rug. Is this a main element of my campaign? No, it's not. But when I'm asked about it, am I going to hide and sweep under the rug the old truth? No, I'm not going to do that either. Yeah. We have to stand for the truth. And if we don't learn from past government lies, we risk making the same okay. mistakes. I, I mean, I read into all of your comments about uh, Saudi, potential Saudi involvement. Yeah. And I think people should read it. There are yep. a lot of September 11th families who feel that there was more Saudi involvement than we have been privy to. I think that yep. the comments about federal agents on planes... Uh, you know, really uh, sort of sent people uh, sort of wondering what you were talking as about. As but, you would, as gonna... you, you probably have experienced with the left wing media as well. The Atlantic's purposefully uh, really scripted out something well, that, that was... was taken in a very different context. Well, we just but, played but... your soundbite from there. But I, I want to ask yep. you one more question. Um, 
And that has to do with Israel, because yes. you have said that you would like to see Israel get to a place where they don't need U.S. economic aid, right? So I want to be very clear you about see that. see Israel as our most important partner in the Middle East. Of course. And I think one of the top jobs that the U.S. and Israel share in common is making sure that we never get to a nuclear armed Iran. I'll tell you this, Martha, is by the end of my first term, our relationship with Israel will be deeper than it ever has been because it won't just be a client relationship. It'll be a true friendship. What do actual friends do? They push each other to be the strongest version of themselves. I've said that I would lead Israel to Abraham Accords 2.0, getting Saudi Arabia and Oman and Qatar into that agreement. That will take Israel into a brighter future that's good for Israel, good for the United States. And I also believe that we have a lot to learn from Israel. I love their border policies. They're tough on crime policies. Let's bring some of that home here to the United States as well. That's where I'm at. So you weren't saying that Israel should be treated exactly the same as every other country in the Middle East? No, zero. In fact, and, and it's funny, I'm learning a lot about political media. I'm new to politics as an outsider. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot of the, you know, I, I think my rise has threatened a lot of other people. That's no secret. Literally, uh, things that I've said supposedly on the Russell Brand podcast, non-quotes that are attributed to me. But it's been a lot of fun as an outsider coming in and learning how this game is played. All right, Vivek, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on stage tomorrow night. And we thank you for being with us in Milwaukee today. And um, certainly your, your workout part of your debate prep is, is making the rounds. So um, we look forward to seeing you on the stage tomorrow night. It's Many good seeing you, Mark. Always good to see you, too. Vivek thank Ramaswamy you. joining us here in Milwaukee.